Okay, let's talk about the research designs. So these are the um, designs you can choose when you are going to conduct your own research na. This is a continuation of chapter one since uh, we lacked time last week. So I told you that I will be recording um, this portion, okay? So this will be included in our quiz this week. So first one, we have the action research. So you can use this type of research design when you want to solve a problem actually in a local setting so if you are interested in finding out whether something will work or something will be a solution to a problem then you can conduct an action research okay and then we have the so-called descriptive research from the name itself you are just interested in describing um, the nature or the characteristic, the properties of, of your respondents or your subject sa research. So, pwede siyang tao, pwede siyang bagay, pwede siyang phenomenon or situation that you want to describe. We call it descriptive research. So, for example, you want to know the IQ level of the pharmacy student. So that is actually a descriptive research because you will be describing what will be the level of the IQ of the pharmacy students. Okay? And then we have the explanatory research. So from the name itself also, you will just, uh, you just want, you are just interested in explaining things or explaining phenomenon um, that is really not studied well. So, hindi siya pwedeng maging explanat explanatory research if ano, yung topic mo is very well studied na marami ka na masyadong researches na makikita and mababasa about that topic. Kasi uh, when you say explanatory research, you have, a, you have a topic on hand and wala ka pa masyadong makuhang literatures about it. So you want to add sa body of knowledge, you want to explain something. So you will be conducting uh, this type of research. So, pwede mo ding i-explain yung mga relationship between variables sa research mo or ma-predict whether a factor would lead to a situation. For example, kapag ka pumunta ba ako sa mall, meron ba yung relationship sa pagkakaroon ko ng COVID-19? Okay? So, that's explanatory research. Um, next, we have exploratory research so just like um explanatory research um exploratory research then is interested in uncovering data on a situation or a phenomenon uh, wherein ano konti pa lang din yung alam natin so actually nung nag-start yung covid-19 so syempre um since it's a new it's a new coronavirus. Um, ano siya? Um, konte pa lang yung um, nalalaman natin. So, when it started, actually, many researchers are conducting, we're conducting exploratory research wherein they explore what is really COVID-19. Um, ano yung characteristics ng virus? Ano yung characteristics ng sakit? So, ganun, exploratory research. But nowadays, you cannot do exploratory research about COVID-19 anymore because um, the old variant is actually well studied. If you want to explore something, then uh, we can explore on the new variants or we can explore to... Uh, we can explore uh, yung pag, ano, pag discover natin ng new vaccines or even treatment itself. Kasi iba yung vaccine, iba din naman yung treatment talaga, yung drug for COVID-19. So, konti pa lang yung nagagawa na research for that. Next, we have correlational research. When you conduct correlational research, you are actually um, looking for the significant take note of the word relationship 
or associ association between a factor um, um, between two or more characteristics or factors without really knowing what is the cause. So for example, um, example of correlational research is like you want to know if there is a relationship between economic status and um, their preference and the preference of your respondents in getting vaccinated or getting vaccine sa COVID-19. So gusto mo tingnan kung yun bang yung malaki yung sahod like annually uh, mas preferred ba nila yung pagpapavaccine or yung mga low income households yung may gusto. So and and ano yung mga reasons, may significant relationship ba yung um, household income or yung economic status doon sa preference ng pagpapavaccine sa COVID-19. So you are interested to know um, the relationship of the variables in your study. That is called correlational research. And then we have evaluation research. So from the name itself, evaluation, you want to assess something. You want to assess the effect of something or the impact, the result or outcome of operations and policies and programs. So kung napansin nyo, like sa school, um, meron tayong tinatawag na TBA, di ba? Yung, yung annually nga, or, yeah, every SEM, nagpapa-evaluate yung guidance office sa inyo, sa inyong mga teachers. So, pwede yung, yung mga subjects niyo currently and then yung teachers niyo i-evaluate niyo. Actually, um, the guidance office is conducting an evaluation re research. So, tinitingnan nila if um, okay ba magturo yung mga teachers ninyo or may mga problem ba yung mga students sa kanila mga teachers. Okay? And then we have policy research. So, hindi naman ito talaga common sa mga students but for organizations, this is common because this is concerned in developing um, and formulating policies or kung meron ng existing na mga policies or guidelines ang isang organization, then they may do assessment of that policy. If meron ba siyang effect or meron ba siyang impact sa organization itself. Next, we have exposed or causal comparative research. So, ginagamit ito when the researcher is... Uh, interested sa pag-observe ng existing conditions and then um, they will look back, meaning for example, meron ng existing na condition and then they will look back and look for the factors that causes or that cause that specific um, condition. So titingnan nila, bakit kaya nagkaroon ng ganitong condition ng isang community? Ano kaya yung mga factors na na-expose yung mga people in that community, bakit sila nagkaroon ng ganong condition. So, it's looking back, meaning you have the existing condition and then you go back in time and um, observe ano yung mga factors that led to the development of that condition. We call it exposed or causal comparative research. And then, um, we can also do historical research but not much sa pharmacy na side because when you say historical research, you will be collecting data from the past um, in historical context ito. So most likely yung mga um, nag-aaral ng history. So mag-ano sila, mag-collect sila ng mga artifacts or anything that um, will explain the existing condition natin and then ano yung naging history niya sa past. Okay? And then we have ethnographic research. Ito naman is studying the culture, the tradition, or yung mga customs ng isang group of people like, like sa mga tribes, ganun. Uh, yung study ni Ma'am 
ni sino ba yun? Ni Ma'am Gurley, as far as I know, sa kanyang PhD, she actually studied about a tribe sa Sarangani and she lived there with them kasi nag-o-observe siya kung ano yung mga traditions nila, paano sila mag-diagnose ng sakit, ano yung ginagawa nila. We call it ethnographic research. Okay? And then the last one, we have the phenomenological research. So this one is a qualitative research. When you say qualitative, um, wala kang numerical data dito just like sa ethnographic. Kasi sa ethnographic, you will just write everything you have observed doon sa ano, certain group of people na um, subject ng iyong study. Sa phenomenological research naman, it is still a qualitative research. You will have you will not have a numerical data here um, but um, ano ang kaibahan nila when you say ano kaibahan nila ng, ng ethnographic research sa phenomenological you will be asking or you will be observing your subject so i i mean they, you will be asking their experiences so the keyword here kay experience or experiences like uh, kung gusto mong malaman yung experiences ng mga pharmacist, mga hospital pharmacist in handling COVID-19 patients. Ano yung ginagawa nila? Ano yung practices nila? Ano yung mga best experiences nila? And then yung mga worst or mga bad experiences nila? If you want to know that, then you are uh, you will be conducting a phenomenological research. Kasi again, this is concerned in knowing the experience or experiences of your participants. And when you write this research, you will be narrating. Ikwento mo lang din, sulat mo, and then ikwento mo lang din sa paper mo yung mga experiences na sinagot ng iyong mga participants. So these are the research designs. Uh, hindi ko actually sinali yung experimental, but sa pharmacy, um, most of the researches sa pharmacy are experimental. Okay, so sa experimental, we manipulate our variables. Nagkakandak tayo ng experimentation and tinitingnan natin kung may effect ba. Like for example, gumawa tayo ng gamot pinapainom natin siya sa ating mga subjects like sa animals and then we'll see if meron ba silang effect. So yun yung research design na common sa pharmacy. But we are not solely for experimental research because we can conduct other types of research designs like what I have discussed dito sa slide na ito. Okay? So again, this one is included sa ating quiz sa chapter 1.